What is up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mug. Check it out. I've got a protectorate of Minoth Cinerator here, and we're going to paint it up. So I'm going to be using a lot of P3 paints, that the ones that come in the protectorate of Minoth starter kit. So you've got your Minoth base, Minoth highlight. You've also got Lead Belcher, Balthazar Gold from Games Workshop, Sanguine base, and Abaddon Black, and finally Seraphim Sepia. So the first thing we do is we prime our model. Oh, Celestia Gray, what is that from? The first thing we do is we prime our model in white. And uh, you can see that I've, I've still got the, the base primed in white. But everything else is just we're doing base coats and then a wash today. So here is our model. You want to get smooth, even coverage with your primer. They've got such huge honking shields, and there's a lot of surface area that it covers on their bodies. So you want to make sure you hit the back of the shield as well as the areas of their bodies hidden behind the shield. So Minoth White Base is the first color we're going to use and we're going to paint all of their armor plates in this color. The uh, Protectorate of Minoth for the War Machine faction is a very uh, interesting army to play. I've been reading up there's this website called Battle College, and it's very focused on, on War Machine and Hordes and stuff. Um, and so it's got like backgrounds for all of the units and all of the Warjacks and all of the casters and tactics on how to use them, some pictures and stuff. And it's pretty cool. Just as someone who's never really painted War Machine models before, it's a great resource for me to look at, as well as just Google image searching Protectorate of Minoth War Machine stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, Minoth, the P3 colors, Duke, the P3, what's wrong with that dog? The P3 colors are a little bit thinner. I, I kind of compare them to Games Workshop's layer colors, where uh, you really have to shake up the bottles and you really have to um, thin them and make sure that you don't have too much on your brush Otherwise, it's gonna get really clumpy and even worse uh, It's gonna streak when you try to smooth the colors out on the model if you paint on a huge clump of paint and You try to uh, spread it around and make sure you have even coverage If it's not thinned down and the paints the pigments are already separating then unfortunately It's gonna create some really bad streaks and it's going to be obvious when you paint it on and you see the color underneath popping through and just paint streaks in general are, are really hard on the eye to look at so you want to try not to let that happen as much as possible also you may have noticed that there's no music in this video i've decided to go in a new direction for my tutorials and not put the music in the actual video itself i'm, I'm going to try this direction and let me know what you guys think of it i'm actually going to make a 40 minute long <laughs> track or, or youtube video of the music that i put in my in my tutorials a lot of people have been messaging me and saying hey i like to listen to my own music um i like to watch your tutorials but i don't really care for the music that you use and uh, the music has been such a, a part of my of my videos that i didn't want to cut it out completely there was a time when i i tried it out and when i was watching the videos in um in review just to review them i thought oh man i it's missing something it's it's just too quiet i hear my my voice or my my paintbrush or my air conditioning and I just I didn't care for it so I thought well how, how can I keep the music but still give people who want to watch the videos but don't like the music a chance to uh, get that experience so I'm leaving the music I'm leaving the videos music free the tutorials and I am going to be putting my the music up in a different track and I'm going to include the link to that track at the bottom of all my videos and the music is all royalty free from incompetech.com i n c o m p e t e c h.com and uh, kevin mcleod is the guy who made all the tracks just about all the tracks the other track that i use that is not by incompetech incompetech and kevin mcleod is one called city of angels and uh, that is actually a very old track from the old flip camera 
software. When you buy a flip camera, you used to get um, get this CD with some extra tracks for helping you edit your videos, and that was a song that was on uh, on it. That was one of the songs. All right, so now that we've got our uh, dry brush of or, or our our Minoff base rather, we're gonna be painting on the base color of the white cloth. Now, Celestia Gray is the color we're going to use for his actual robes, the cloth on the robes. And I decided to do this because I thought when you look at the model on the Privateer Press website, or if you look at a lot of people who've painted this model, their robes are very much the same color as their armor. And I think that's fine, but I think a cool, a cooler effect would be to contrast the robes and the armor. So the robes are going to be a very pale, uh, very, very clean, crisp, white with grayish blue shade and the armor is going to be more of an ivory cream bone colored white with uh, sepia and uh, browner shades and i think that contrast is it makes it much more interesting to look at than having everything kind of be the same color so yeah if the the point is if you want to listen to the music along with the video then by all means just put uh put my tutorial up and then in a new window or in another tab just open another one and click on the link to the video in the description and all that is is the music that i use for my tutorials so you can choose whether or not to have music to your tutorials or listen to your own music the power of choice All right, the next color is Minoth White Highlight. Now for this, we're gonna dry brush it on. And what that means is you wanna get a little bit of a bigger brush, or if you have a dry brush, that's even better, a brush that's specifically made for dry brushing. But if you don't have one of those, just get one of your bigger brushes with uh, a little bit fatter one with more bristles and dip just the tip of your brush into the paint and then wipe about 80 to 90% of that off on a napkin. You really don't want very much paint at all and then all you're going to be doing is lightly dry brushing over and over and over so that there's no obvious paint streaks the same area and the same color we're doing this at this point and not waiting till later because if we painted some of the other things like that uh, cross symbol or the red trimming and then we try to dry brush we would get the paint all over it so as a general rule of thumb if you have a model like like this guy, that's um, the majority of him is armor plates or, for example, space marines or even better, a, a vehicle like a space marine vehicle or an Imperial Guard tank, Necron flyer, anything that is primarily or the majority is one color, then uh, generally you want to do the dry brushing, the base coat and then the dry brushing first. That way you don't have to clean up later. We are getting this uh, white highlight everywhere. It's very, very light. Um, when you look at the Minoth white base, you can see that it's got kind of a bone color, an off-white creamy bone color. And um, a lot of people thought, well, I thought Minoth was supposed to be all in white. How come the color is more of this yellowish bone color? But that's really more as a base to build your color up from. Yeah, I don't really know anything about War Machine. A friend of mine back in Hawaii tried to get me into it once, and I think at the time I was really heavily into fantasy. I hadn't really done too much 40k yet, and I remember just trying to wrap my head around all the rules in Warhammer Fantasy at the time. And then I, I was interested in 40k, so I, I was already starting to paint up some models, but I hadn't really gotten into it. And I thought, there's just no way I can learn a whole nother rule set. But uh, it seems that it's a great game. I mean, they're, they've already released their second edition, I believe, at the time of this video. They've, um, have, they have a huge, huge following. It's usually when you hear about 40k or fantasy, well, no fantasy anymore, but 40k tournaments or tournaments for miniatures war games, usually 40k is the big one and then they also mention having a war machine hordes tournament so 
So the models look great. Um, we're going on to the sanguine base now. So we're going to be painting all of the red um, edging and accent colors. Th this is going to take, I think, the longest in the video because there's so much red trimming on the armor. And this is what is really going to drain your soul out through your fingertips if you're not listening to music, if you're not being distracted. Sometimes if you want to put a movie on in the background, that's a good way to, to while away the the time because this this is a, a slog to get through all of this. Again, with everything, you want to just dip the tip of your paintbrush into the paint. You don't want too much because um, not only will you apply more than you, you need, but it's bad for your paintbrush if you get paint where the brushes or where the bristles meet the metal part that's the, called the ferrule and if you get paint there and it dries then uh, it pretty much is going to ruin your brush unless you clean it with a brush cleaner so uh, speaking of which i do have to go out and get some brush cleaner and clean some of my brushes Yeah, what was I saying? Uh, Privateer Press's War Machine models. The reason why you haven't really seen any on my channel is not only because I don't play the game and uh, I don't want to have anything else in my collection cluttering up the place, but uh, I, I've I never really cared for the aesthetic of the steampunk kind of uh, kind of look that they were going for. And whenever I think about okay, what what draws me to a new game? A new game system. Uh, the models look. The model. I thought the models looked pretty cool. I think some of them were definitely a lot more interesting than than others. But uh, mainly, it's the the models and the fluff and the story in the game. And what I used to love about Warhammer Fantasy, especially because I got into it from a role playing standpoint, was that you could take a general of the empire boxed kit and you can convert him and build him up any way you want and create your own backstory and create a character that uh, is completely original and new and yours you know and you have ownership over that and the thing that i always really didn't care for with the war machine stuff was that you had to kind of stick to what they had written about their figures if you want this if you want the best combos for your army you need this specific caster and you need this specific uh, character to to help you combo and stuff and you know I understand why you want to do that because um, the, the narrative of the war machine universe is very fixed on on the actions of these heroes and uh, and that's fine but I always thought it was more interesting to kind of create come up with your own your own stuff okay so <laughs> while I was rambling I kind of did uh, the the bottom half of the figure, the front at least, and you can see that they've got the the rims, the edges of the armor plates that are hanging off of his upper legs, as well as right by the hip, he's got a little bit of a plate. Generally, my my rule is when when painting these guys, they have some very flat areas that have these gold studs on them, and when you look at the the pictures on the box, the any areas that have any areas that have the gold studs on them are going to be painted in red. So right there under his chest plate, he's got a, a, a strip of, of red cloth with gold over. And down at the bottom of his upper leg armor, it's, there's an edging of red with, with those gold studs. And up right by the hip, more, more gold studs. Also, any... Uh, any of the thin edges, like the ones in the front, you can see right above his tabard, has some very thin lines of, of, of I guess, a separate kind of cloth or material. So I'm painting that in red as well, just to create a, a interesting thing for the eye to look at. You see these very cream colored plates, and then they're broken up with red. And uh, when we add the gold, that's gonna be another color to break up that, that look, that color of the bone. And then they've got these these areas here that come up over the shoulders. See, the, <laughs> the reason why this is going to take so long is because 
red is the second color you really see when you look at these models. The first is obviously the, the, the bright white, but the thing with the red is you have to kind of be pretty precise. You don't want that red to go over onto the plates. So I have to make sure that I'm painting all the separate pieces, but from different angles, because if you turn the model up like I'm doing now, you see they've got some the, the bottom flat surface of their shoulder pads. And underneath there is uh, the space between the plates. And um, instead of painting them black, I'm just going to paint them in the sanguine base color because it's uh, going to deceive the eye naturally to thinking that there's, there's blank space down there. So yeah, this is really uh, just for my commission job. I think the, uh, the possibility of all the combos and mixing and matching your, your guys together and finding all those killer combinations, I think that's really interesting. Uh, I think for me, I'm just going to stick with the generic 40k and fantasy kind of, kind of games. But yeah, that's to answer that question, why I don't paint um, Privateer Press, why I don't paint War Machine. I like the models. Some of them I think look really uh, clunky battle bot kind of um, kind of look that I, I don't really care for but uh, as a whole some of you know the models have such great sculpts especially the Crix faction which looks totally gross and creepy and really disgusting uh, I think some of it is really interesting looking but yeah like I said generally I don't I don't really care for how how set all of the all of the fluff in the fiction is plus two. I know I've seen alternate color schemes for everything, but um, the fact that I think you you kind of have to in in the in the background stick to certain colors is is kind of off putting. I love how the Imperial Guard, Space Marines, uh, the Empire, Bretonia, they all have got different. They all have different uh, provinces and sectors and uniforms and colors and heraldry. And uh, I love that freedom to be able to create your own kind of force. And I think if I was if I was young though, if I was a beginner, or if I didn't care about the fluff and I didn't care about all that kind of stuff, I would I would be interested in Privateer Press in War Machine because the the price point for getting in into the game is very very good compared to something like Warhammer 40k where you've got to buy it. Uh, not only the rule book and your army book, which you also would have to do with War Machine, but a lot of times you're you're buying lots of very expensive vehicles, troops, uh, whatever the rules say are good. A lot of people want to get as much of that in their army as possible, and uh, Games Workshop is excellent at always, you know, keeping things like uh, keeping their product on the shelves because they say okay this edition we're going to make Eldar wave serpents the best thing in the entire game and then uh okay we're we're doing something new now so let's make dark angels black knights the raven wing those boxes haven't really been selling so let's bump up their rules and give them a formation that makes them completely unkillable and just monsters on the battlefield and uh by doing that they're able to to sell their sell their models even more especially models that haven't been doing so well And uh, in contrast, Privateer Press, while they, they might be changing some of their rules and their stats and special rules and everything, they uh, you, ha you have less models to get in on the game. Sometimes you might only have, you know, f three or four, five different units and warjacks and stuff, and that might be enough. Whereas for a, for a regular game of 40k, you'd need to get infantry and vehicles and flyers even and characters and it's a lot of money. Okay, so uh, one one point I wanna I wanna make is that they've got this cloth around their wrists, both both wrists, and you want to be painting that in that sanguine base color. Also, under their arms, you see they've got these uh, shoulder pieces that go over their shoulders and down under their armpits for both sides, and uh, you want to make sure you get that as well. There is another look at the front. They've got these tassels right by. Uh, around their groin area in the front by those armor plates that hang over the tabard. So those tassels are going to be colored red. And uh, I'm painting, like I said, under the shoulder plates. You can see the top of the shoulder plate, his right shoulder plate. I've painted red um, underneath all of the shoulder plates and the shadows. And now I'm just getting that 
that armpit piece done. Okay, now on the back, there's another one of those strips with the, the gold uh, the gold bits on them, studs. So I uh, painted that whole thing in red. Also, right uh, on his on his headpiece, the the part that's covering his neck, that's going to be in red, and then it goes up and behind his head, and you can you can you can tell when you look at the model where where all of that is right there because it's got gold studs on that as well. So just t take a look at all the angles. Always check your angles and make sure you paint um, on the insides and in the shadows because. Even though most people are going to be looking at your models from the top down, down onto the table, looking at them, the worst thing in the world is for somebody to think your model is awesome and amazing and they come up and they pick it up and then the minute they pick it up they see all the angles that you missed like behind the shield or under the under the armor or under the robe and um, and they're completely unpainted. So we're doing a, 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 as complete of a job as we can and I uh, want to get all these colors on correct. Oh yeah, right by the foot, the first plate above the toe plate is, or above the toe armor, is going to be in red as well. So we're moving on. We're moving on now to Balthazar gold. This is our our base color for all the gold, and uh, there is a lot of gold on this model. This entire the entire bottom plate of the shield is in gold, and uh, I did not shake up my paint pot like I should have. So you can see how it's separating there on the bottom. It's going on really watery. So I'm shaking it up right now. And adding it onto there. So I'm basically just following the the box art. I've got the picture of the box uh, next to me on my phone while I'm filming this and I'm just kind of checking and referencing where the gold pieces are, where the silver pieces are. And there's a lot um, because of all the all the the bits and detail. You have a lot of gold, gold and silver bits. So uh, this is a part that you always want to want to make sure you paint behind the shield. Some of these angles are going to be tough to get to. So in in the breaks between, generally in the breaks between all of these clips, I am uh, painting and cleaning up mistakes that I've made before. So you might see me. Uh, get a little bit of a splotch of paint onto a different part of the model and I, I might not address that I might fix that in between videos so uh, that's that's why that is otherwise if I had to show and record and film every single bit of paint and fix every mistake that I'm making at this angle it would probably take twice as long just because it's a, a hard angle for me to paint at and hold the model so that it looks straight up and down to you the viewer through the camera and uh, I, I do make a lot of mistakes, so it, it's easier for me to clean that up in between the takes. So this is going to be a, a tricky part to paint, as well as to highlight once the washes have gone down. His armor plates here at the front, you'll notice that like this one I'm painting right now, the bottom one that's hanging right above the tabard, it has a little bit of sculpted detail on it. And it's almost like a little fresco. So I'm painting that all in gold. There's one more similar, similarly sculpted to that, about two plates up. So that I'm painting as well. You can kind of see it looks a little uh, like it's got some, some ridges and bumps to it. And uh, I'm also painting the ones right there on the, the torso armor.
and now I'm gonna start hitting the studs. So all of the all of the studs on the red armor that we that we had painted red, they're all gonna be gold. So we're painting them all in gold right now. On his his leg plates, he's got some gold studs right over there at the hip and at the bottom, which you saw me paint just now. And uh, that upper plate has gold edging to it. So I'm painting the edges in gold right there. On both legs, you don't want to just hit one leg, you want to hit both. And behind there, up through the back. He's, he's also got some studs right there on his foot armor. And right there on his leg armor, one of the uh, inner, inner pieces, inner layers that's peeking out right there has a little bit of that gold fresco on it. So again, painting studs, lots of studs on the model. And for his sword, the the pommel of the sword, that little spike is going to be in gold. Most of the, the handguard is going to be in gold for the, the hilt. Uh, there's a little bit of silver detail. One of the pipes in the center is silver, but generally the whole thing is going to be gold. And then the little sculpted fresco in the center of the sword on both sides. It's got that, that sculpted texture detail to it. That is going to be painted up in Balthazar gold as well. Yeah, so that sculpted detail is on both sides of the sword. And right under the shoulder plates, there's a little bit of, of a plate there hanging down right over his upper arm. That has a gold rim and three gold studs on both sides. Now inside of the armor plates, inside of the red edging, you see uh, some, some of that gold relief that gold sculpted uh, texture so we're we're just getting our brush as thin as possible and putting that gold paint down on the inside you're gonna be doing that for both armor both shoulder shoulder plates and oh yeah that part hanging right over the shoulder shoulder blades as well has that sculpted gold center texture Yeah, so we're doing that on both sides. Another helpful tip when you're when you have a very small surface area to work with like this, and you don't want to get your your paint on like I don't want to get the gold paint too much on the red. A good tip would be to put a just a little bit of water, not even a whole drop, but maybe just dip the the very tip of your paintbrush into some water, and uh, that way the the gold will flow into the cracks and into the crevices of that silver shoulder pad rim a lot easier than sticking just to the top. And again, we're painting the the rims of that, that, that Under Armour piece with the gold studs on it. And that back bottom part is more of that sculpted fre fresco, that sculpted texture piece. And you've got your gold studs there.
you can tell I'm just looking at the model and trying to see, okay, where are all these gold bits? There's so much and it's so easy to miss. And the helmet. The helmet is uh, completely in gold. Oh, well, there you go. Moving on to the next color, I believe. We're going to be doing a lead belcher, hitting up all the silver bits. I think after this, we've only got black to paint. So, yes, again, more of the same, picking out those details and hitting them from all angles. That's basically the name of the game with, with a model this detailed with this much um, different kinds of areas packed onto it. It's, it's interesting to look at. It's very cool to look at. It's easy to get the first colors on, right? Like the, um, that first Minot base color and the, even the Minot white highlight. But once, once you've got that first color down and you have to start picking out the detail, like this, the, silver, the silver binding to the shield right here at the bottom, there's also at the top there. So you've got to make sure you hit all the different angles. It's a lot of just patience picking out the smaller, smaller areas. And of course you don't have to, but I'm trying to do the, the highest quality work that I can. He's got a little silver edging right there on the front, right on the torso piece, right above the groin. I thought it was interesting when you look at the model, you can really see it on the, uh, the product page or the box cover, but yeah, you want to make sure you hit that in silver. Also, he's got these screws all over his armor in the shoulder pad, right by the top of the torso next to the head, um, within his neck armor, screwing the neck armor to the torso armor. So it's it's part of that whole steampunk aesthetic, rivets and screws and um, lots, of, lots of that kind of thing. So any of those screw points that you can find, we're going to be hitting with lead belcher. The blade is going to be in lead belcher because the blade is silver. There is also a little bit of a tube right through the center above the handguard that is also going to be in silver. Right there. You can see me painting it right there. So it's just like a little exhaust tube coming up through the handle. Uh, I am, yeah, looking for, just looking for those screw points. There is one on each side of each leg on each side. There's a bunch in the back armor screwing each plate down. There's some right by the shoulder. I think in the shoulder pads on both the front and the back, you've got one on the on the massive plate itself, so one on either side, and then you've got one uh, inside the uh, attaching the shoulder piece, the back of the shoulder piece, and then in the front you've got the ones right by his his helmet. So I've let that dry for a bit, came back a little bit later, we're hitting it back up with lead belcher. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm just pointing out there's some screws by the, the hip armor that I, I didn't catch the first time around, so I'm hitting that up. He's got spikes on his right uh, gauntlet. You can see those spikes there. I think they're silver. You can kind of see them in the uh, box art, and I, I believe they were silver. So I honestly, I thought they would have been gold, but um, I like I like any kind of interesting variety in the paint colors there. So that is in silver. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Now onto Rhinox hide for the uh, hilt of the sword that he's grabbing on. That's going to be done in Rhinox hide. Also the belt, leather belt pieces that are uh, hooking his armor on in the back of his armor, that's going to be in Rhinox hide as well. So Rhinox hide is a Games Workshop base paint. That means it, it should go on pretty smooth as long as you shake up the paint pot. It's, it's not going to separate. It's not going to split. You don't have to worry about seeing the white or the primer underneath it. I'm just painting straight from the pot right now because it's 
it's just the first base color and uh, there's no real detail to it so we don't have to worry about it too much also on the like i mentioned the back of his armor there you've got two little belt straps hooking him in and on the sides on both sides you've got those leather straps right under his armpit so there's a series of i think it looks like looks like you can't really tell but there there's a bunch of like leather looking strap things that are securing his armor to his body so that's what we're going to be painting in rhinox hide sanguine base uh oh yeah you, you can see on the back there's on those armor plates they've got little little rims little edges so we're we're doing that in that red sanguine base color all three of those armor plates the two smaller ones and then the larger one that's covering his his butt Okay, now Abaddon Black, all of the symbols of, oh, I think I said Minoth by accident. Somebody corrected me in my last video. It's Menoth, Menoth. So the Protectorate of Menoth signs, symbols on the shoulder pads. We're doing that in Abaddon Black. He's also got one, I believe it's on uh, right in front of his, his, on his neck piece. And are there any other ones? I think that might be it. Oh, and yeah, hello, the huge one on his shield. So these are tricky because they're so huge. Um, they pop out from the armor plate, and that means that you really kind of want to get as much of that surface as possible. You don't want to just paint the front part of it or, or else it'll look like um, it's the same material as the rest of the shoulder, pl shoulder pad that it's popping out from, if that kind of makes sense. You want to make sure you paint all of the, all of the part that's sticking out, that embossed sculpted symbol. You want to get all of, all of it. So that means you have to turn the model at a bunch of different angles to make sure that that black paint is is covering all the way to the flat surface of the shield or to the flat surface of the shoulder pad. That's a tricky one and you really don't have to worry too much about being too precise. With everything with base coats, you don't have to worry about being too precise about it because a lot of mistakes you can fix in the washes and the highlighting sh uh, highlighting steps. So the last part, we are going to apply the the wash to the model, and this is going to be seraphim sepia. We're not gonna we're not gonna hit the silver. We try not to hit the silver and try not to hit the celestial gray of the robes, but everything else, the armor plates, the uh, red. The gold is also fine, and I'm using a large brush to get the uh, to get the wash on because the the longer bristles, the the more surface area can pull that wash and spread it out around uh, the better. If I was using a smaller brush, then I'm I might be leaving paint streaks, which I which I don't want to do. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. If you want to commission me to paint something of yours, you can contact me at Warbostay Studios, all one word, warbostaystudios at gmail.com. You can also check out my work at warbostaystudios.com. That's my website. And uh, hook up with me on Facebook and Twitter at Warbostay. You can also, if, <laughs> if you feel like donating to my studio, if you feel like you're in a generous mood and you want to buy me a cup of coffee, head to my website. There's a donate button and uh, everything goes through PayPal. And uh, of course, I appreciate all of the com comments, feedback, hitting the like button, subscribing, uh, anything you want. Any anything you want to do to connect with me, I appreciate it. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this Protectorate of Menoth video. And stay tuned. We're going to let the washes dry. Come back for part two where we're going to do highlights and final details. Thanks for watching, everybody.